let's start with 39. Uh, we're trying to take the derivative of this function, which is a product of functions. And uh, they're probably just trying to uh, test us, see if we notice that this is a, a power function, like a, a polynomial function. This is an exponential function. Um, we're multiplying them together, so we just need to apply the, the uh, product rule. So the derivative would be the derivative of t squared first, that'd be 2t, and we just multiply that two by 2 to the t, plus t squared times the derivative of 2 to the t. So if we were to flip back to our list of derivatives, we see that the derivative of a to the x, so 2 to the t, is the natural log of a. Okay, so 2 is the base of the exponential function. Uh, so we put that there, times 2 to the t. So we'll just put that right there. All right. And let's see. I mean, we, we have a, a 2 to the t here in both expressions. So we could factor out a 2 to the t. Get 2t plus t squared times the natural log of 2. Um, but that's about it. That's that's plenty good. So just recognizing that we need to use the product rule, uh, the, main, the main thing right there. 43. So now we have a logarithmic function. 2 as the base. Squared over x minus 1. All right, so we have the log base 2 of a, of a function. And so we're going to take the derivative uh, of the log base 2 of this function and then use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of this function. So we can flip back to our list of logarithms and we see that we have f prime is equal to 1 over the natural log of this base here, that's 2. Uh, times the function, which is x squared over x minus 1. Uh, then we need to take the derivative of this function. So we will use the, the uh, quotient rule there. So we have 2x times x minus 1 minus x squared times the derivative of the denominator, that's just 1. Uh, then we have x minus 1 squared. So let's see, this uh, fraction is in the denominator. This can become x minus 1 over the natural log of 2 times x squared. Uh, then here we can distribute this 2x, and then we'll have like terms with x squared. We get 2x squared minus x squared is just going to leave us with x squared uh, minus 2x. Uh, and now over x minus 1 squared. We've got two factors of x minus 1 here and, and 1 here, so we can cancel 1 each there. Um, we can factor out an x in the numerator here, do x times x minus 2. Okay, and so we have a factor of x right here and a factor of x down there. So cross out one of those, cancels with that guy right there. And so in the numerator, we have x minus 2, and that'll be over uh, the natural log of 2 times x times x minus 1. Um, that's uh, about as good as it can be, I believe. Um, you may choose to distribute this x or do any number of things. And I just checked the back of the book. That's exactly what they have. So um, that's the best you can probably hope it to be. Um, let's jump down to 46. Uh -huh. y equals log base 10. So that when we put 10 as the log, or as the, as the base of the log, we call that the common log. Uh, that really doesn't do anything other than give that one a special name, but uh, it's something. So um, 
but it's the same as anything else. It, it just has a base of 10. And so we look at our list of derivatives, and y prime will be 1 over the natural log of the base. That's the natural log of 10. That's not anything special. It's just it doesn't come out to be any special number or anything. Um, times this function here, so x squared minus 1 over x uh, times the derivative of this function. So we'll take the derivative with, um, uh, what shall we do? Maybe we prefer, rather than use the quotient rule, we'll just view it as you know, just realizing that we could divide both of these things by x and get this to be x minus, say, x to the negative 1, 1 over x. Uh, just makes taking the derivative may, maybe a little easier, maybe more complicated, I don't know, when it comes to combining these together. Uh, the derivative of x is 1, uh, and the derivative of, uh, of x to the negative 1 would be negative x to the negative 2. So you could do that. Um, so now we have a fraction in the denominator. We can uh, flip it over. Um, we can multiply by the reciprocal of this. However you look at it, it can be rewritten as x over natural log of 10 times uh, x squared minus 1. Uh, this could be here. This could be written as, uh, I guess we're going to want to write this as um, a common denominators here. So we'll do x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. Just took that 1 and gave it a common denominator of x squared. Um, so we have x uh, times x squared plus 1, if we add those together, over uh, the natural log of 10 times uh, x squared minus 1 times x squared. Um, I guess we could kill one of those factors there. Um, and we have x squared plus 1 over the natural log of 10 times x squared minus 1 times x. It uh, looks pretty good. I'm kind of tempted to factor this as a difference of squares, but then we just get x plus 1 times x minus 1. That wouldn't cancel with this at all. So it looks like that's the best we can do. All right. So just a matter of taking the derivative, following it very strictly, the natural log of the base times the function times the derivative of that function, whatever it is. Um, and you you may like doing this, and you may prefer to do the quotient rule. I think doing the quotient rule probably would have wound up being a better idea. Um, yeah, I think so. So whatever you choose to do, that's that's up to you. Uh, all right, let's go on to number sixty-two. Now this is the indefinite integral, 5 to the negative x, dx. So if we remember back to the antiderivatives, uh, the antiderivative of, let's see, just put a little reminder up here, the antiderivative of a to the x, dx, is equal to 1 over the natural log of a times a to the x. Okay. Uh, so if it were a to the x, or a number to the x power times the derivative uh, of that uh, of that function up there, whatever that is, then it would be really straightforward. But now we've just got a little bit of changing around to do. Um, we'd like it to be 5 to the x dx, but it's 5 to the negative x dx. Uh, so for this to be the derivative, it would have to be negative dx. So we have to multiply this by a negative, and we could put a negative there. And so we do have now 5 to the, say, u uh, is negative x, and du would be negative dx. So we can replace this with 5 to the u du. So 
So 5 to the u du equals negative, and now we can just follow the antiderivative here. 1 over the natural log of 5 times 5 to the u, and now just switch back what u is. 1 over the natural log of 5 times 5 to the negative x. Um, and that's it. Uh, last, nope, not the last one, second to last one, number 65. Got the antiderivative of 3 to the 2x over 1 plus 3 to the 2x. Uh, dx. Okay, so remember that uh, we want to think in terms of, of u and du, and if we let this be u right here, this denominator, uh, then remember that the derivative of u, the derivative of an exponential function, uh, you know, the exponential makes its appearance, it makes an appearance in its own derivative, but there's this multiple of the natural log of a. Okay, so let's take a look at what this might look like. If this is u, 1 plus 3 to the 2x, then du would be equal to, this would be 0 plus, so the derivative of 3 to the 2x, um, first it would be the natural log of 3 uh, times 3 to the 2x times 2, okay, times dx. Uh, this 2 just comes from taking the derivative of this function that's uh, in the exponent. Uh, so, let's see, this part is good, that's just exactly what we need there. We could put this 2 out in front of the natural log, and then that would become the exponent of 3. So we could have the natural log of 9 times 3 to the 2x dx. So we got 3 to the 2x dx, but we need natural log of 9 in there, so that this can be du. So we'll do 1 over the natural log of 9 outside. And now we're ready to take the antiderivative of our new function with u in it. So we have du over u. And the, the antiderivative of, excuse me, I forgot to put this up right there. The antiderivative of du over u is uh, e to, let's see, the natural log of u. The natural log of u. So we have 1 over the natural log of 9 times the natural log of the absolute value of u, remember that, uh, equals 1 over the natural log of 9 times the natural log of the absolute value of u, which is 1 plus 3 to the 2x. Okay. So if we were to take the antiderivative of this, we'd wind up with 1 over this function, and then we would... Uh, multiply by this constant, and we take the derivative of 3 to the 2x and wind up canceling this natural log of 9 uh, pretty soon, and then we'd have 3 to the 2x over 1 plus 3 to the 2x. Um, and let's see. We could, yeah, we, we could make this the power. That, that doesn't seem like it would do anything. So we'll just leave it like that. Natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus 3 to the 2x. You could write it over the natural log of 9 if you wanted to, um, but that wouldn't really do anything. Um, so now we'll cross over to definite integrals, and we'll do one of those. Number 69. That's uh, going to be the definite integral between 0 and 1 of 5 to the x minus 3 to the x dx. So we first have to take the antiderivative of 5 to the x minus 3 to the x dx. Uh, each one of these, we take the antiderivative separately. So we flip back to our uh, what the antiderivative of an exponential function is. So the antiderivative of 5 to the x is 1 over the natural log of 5 uh, times 5 to the x itself minus... 1 over the natural log of 3 
times 3 to the x plus c. Pretty straightforward. Uh, then we need to plug in 1 and plug in 0 and subtract. So uh, let's see, we'll do this in orange. 1 over the natural log of 5 times 5 to the 1 minus 1 over the natural log of 3 times 3 to the 1 minus, and we'll do this in white, so it'll be 1 over the natural log of 5 times 5 to the 0 minus 1 over the natural log of 3 times 3 to the 0. Okay, so this is just going to be 5 over natural log of 5, so 5 over the natural log of 5 minus 3 over the natural log of 3 minus, this is 1, 5 to the 0, anything to the 0, as long as it's not 0, anything to the 0 is 1, so we have 1 over the natural log of 5 plus, no, it's just still minus, the plus will come when we subtract here, minus 1 over the natural log of 3. So we have 5 over the natural log of 5 uh, minus 1 over the natural log of 5. So that would be a total of 4 over the natural log of 5. Here we have negative 3, natural log of 3, minus a negative 1 over the natural log of 3. So negative 3 over natural log of 3 plus 1 over the natural log of 3. So that would be a negative 2 over the natural log of 3. So that exact value would be the uh, definite integral. Um, so you can see it, it's in this section it's not a matter of anything uh, really um, heavy conceptually, just some more derivatives and, and uh, another antiderivative uh, to expand our horizons as far as um, our abilities to take derivatives and antiderivatives. So uh, comment, let me know if there's any questions. Thanks for watching.